In my research, I, I'm very interested in understanding what is the causal effect of breastfeeding on child development. So first of all, we have a WHO recommending mothers worldwide to exclusively breastfeed for six months. Uh, and the motivation is exactly to achieve uh, optimal child uh, health, growth and development. But we don't really have causal evidence bagging off this reason. And that is, so that's exactly why I am interested in this question. Um, so if we think about the consequences of providing, of uh, recommending mothers breastfeeding for exclusively for six months, and then the recommendation is also to continue up to, until the child turns two years at least. Um, it's of course puts a lot of pressure on mothers because there will be societal expectations of doing it. A lot of mothers want to, but they have problems. So it also puts um, cost on society because uh, of course we need some health personnel educated to help mothers uh, breastfeed, etc. So there are many cost uh, arguments from uh, an economic perspective. So one, uh, one common argument in the discussion on the duration of maternity leave, for instance, is that it needs to be long enough such that the mother can stay home and breastfeed the child. And that's, of course, very costly for society as a whole to have long maternity leave. So you can think about many economic arguments for this. And of course, if we also if we want optimal child development, then we want to do the best for the child. But there might be other things we could do uh, that could be uh, getting at that aim even better, or maybe breastfeeding is what is needed. What we see in, in rich, at least in richer countries today is that uh, better educated mothers, mothers from better socioeconomic backgrounds, they tend to breastfeed more and for longer uh, than mothers from less uh, advantageous backgrounds. And so that is, there is clear selection into who breastfeeds and who doesn't or who breastfeeds for longer versus shorter. And so that there's a selection issue. And then, of course, we also need to think about which child outcomes we are interested in. We know that children from better socioeconomic backgrounds, they also generally um, have better health. They have a higher IQ. They are better in terms of social emotional skills. So there is already this correlation between SES or like socioeconomic background and child outcomes. And then when we put on top of that, that there is selection into who breastfeeds, so who doesn't, then this is clear that correlations are not necessarily answering uh, our question. So there has been thousands of many studies looking at correlations be between child outcomes and breastfeeding and many of them are not including many uh, they are just including very simple controls some are including more controls what the pattern we see is that the correlation tends to decline in magnitude when including more controls um, the, i will give an example so there is a, a review of um, papers looking at the correlation between IQ, child IQ and breastfeeding. And here the overall conclusion is that breastfeeding increases uh, child IQ. But when you control for um, maternal IQ, then you see that this uh, correlation is so much smaller than if you don't. And this is a really good example, I think, because parental IQ is the most obvious variable that we want to control for uh, when IQ is the outcome. And when the correlation decreases so much in magnitude with this in control, I think it just suggests that there are many controls that we need to, but to include, but normally they are not available in the data set. Um, there are also some other strategies that uh, prior that some researchers have used. Uh, so, for instance, you could think about uh, comparing siblings. 
So one sibling was breastfed and the other sibling was not breastfed. So here you uh, control for a lot of factors that are correlated with um, the child outcome. So these siblings, they will have a very similar childhood um, family environment, et cetera. But of course, uh, so, when, so some studies have found that there are then these uh, positive effects of breastfeeding on child development or uh, earnings in adulthood. But of course, you also have a selection into which child was breastfed and which was not. So there is uh, a very nice paper um, showing that if you just control for parental favoritism, so whether uh, the parents favored one child over the other, then you don't see this correlation between breastfeeding and educational outcome. So, and that's just one control variable that you might think is important to include. And of course, you could also think about other control variables or other differences between these siblings that are important to, to include. So some studies have also used matching. So they have tried to find one child who was breastfed and one child who was not breastfed where all the background characteristics or observable variables were similar. And then they look at the outcomes. It's also clear from the literature that when you use matching, there is much less um, of an effect of breastfeeding on outcomes than if you just use uh, normal OLS regressions. But of course, it doesn't answer the final question of causality because they can only match on those variables that they observe. And you might still think about of a lot of unobserved variables that might be very important for the mother's decision to breastfeed or not. In my reading of the literature, I have only been able to find two convincing uh, studies that get at causal effects of breastfeeding. So one study is an RCT, so a randomized control trial. It was conducted in uh, Belarus uh, in 1996 to 97. And here it was a hospital level intervention uh, where they randomized some hospitals into receiving uh, uh, this breastfeeding promotion intervention and other hospitals, they just had, so they were control hospitals and then they just needed to stay with the status quo. So this is a typical RCT setup. So you have a treatment group and a control group. Um, so this intervention had a strong effect on the probability of exclusive breastfeeding and also any breastfeeding. So they, they received, they are, achieved the, the aim of this intervention. So they uh, increase the duration of exclusive breastfeeding and also the duration of any breastfeeding. So from this study, what the overall findings are is that there are some beneficial effects of breastfeeding on child development, but very limited. So it's much less than what you see in the correlational literature. So in a recent evaluation that I have conducted, we only find uh, statistically significant and persistent effects on weight for age. And that's from birth throughout adolescence. But we don't find any evidence of uh, causal effects on other dimensions of child health, not in infancy and not later on. And we don't find any uh, effect on cognitive development either. So then there is one other study, which is very nice. It's um, a very new uh, study by um, Fitzsimmons and Vera Hernandez. So they study the question of what is the causal effect of breastfeeding on child development in the UK. And this was also among children born around year 2000. So they have a very nice feature in that uh, what they observe, and that is that for the sample of low educated mothers, there is the, an exogenous event that affects their breastfeeding behavior. So they show that the timing of delivery affects uh, the breastfeeding uh, outcomes. So to get more into detail, those mothers who gave birth early in the weekend, 
they receive less support in terms of breastfeeding at the hospital. And the early breastfeeding support is what really matters. Because if you first stop or if you don't start breastfeeding, then you cannot do it later on. Uh, so those who gave birth in the early weekend, they are much less likely to be breastfeeding when the child is three months old compared to those who gave birth during the weekdays where there was more support in terms of breastfeeding. So what they then do is to use what is called an instrumental variable approach. So they have now found this um, nice exogenous variation in terms of timing of uh, birth which affects breastfeeding and it doesn't affect anything else of what they can look at. Um, and then they look at how does this um, breastfeeding outcome, so breastfeeding at three months, how does that affect child development? They also consider health and socio-emotional skills. Uh, they find uh, a very large effect of breastfeeding uh, on cognitive development. I must say that the confidence interval is quite large, so they cannot rule out that the effect is much smaller than the estimate, but they find a large effect of the half a standard deviation. And then they also look at health and social emotional development, and here they don't find an effect. So they don't find any effect on health outcomes. The estimate is more noisy for social emotional development, but at least so I suggest that there is not really an effect on these other dimensions. And that is also similar to what has been found for the, uh, from the probit studies, uh, this RCT in Belarus. So I think from these two studies, we can see that it doesn't seem to be, that doesn't seem to be an effect on child health in general. There might be a large effect on cognitive development. And here I think it's uh, relevant and also interesting to compare these two studies because they actually had, they identify very different effects. Because um, in the UK paper, they have an instrument for breastfeeding for at least three months. The alternative was normally infant formula and very little breastfeeding. So you can think of it as an extensive margin effect. So breastfeeding versus zero breastfeeding. In the RCT, it was very different because they don't randomize women into breastfeed or not breastfeed. They randomize women into a promotion and encouragement of breastfeeding. So in the control group, you still see that women, they were very likely to breastfeed. Uh, so for instance, at three months, on average, control women, they breastfed for three and a half, uh, they, they breastfed three and a half times per day. So you see that it was an effect on the intensive margin. So they, the control children, they were breastfed less, but they were still breastfed. Uh, and that has, that's of course important for the interpretation of the results. Uh, so at this point in time, none of these children who, when they were not given breast milk, then the type of food they received didn't contain certain um, fatty acids, which are thought to be important for brain development. And that might potentially explain this difference in the effect on cognitive development. What makes it more difficult to uh, compare different research designs? Because you actually have a different type of treatment. Um, so, and that's of course also something that is very important to keep in mind when you look at correlational studies, because they have all types of different definitions of breastfeeding. My reading of the literature is that if the alternative to breastfeeding is what you would recommend, so it's high quality infant formula supplemented with specific fatty acids, then any beneficial effect of breastfeeding is very, very small. I, I don't know if there, is a very, if there is a small effect on a contemporaneous child health, but my reading of the literature is that if there is any health effect, it's, it's very small with, during the breastfeeding time, and I don't see any effect that is lasting. Uh, in terms of cognitive development, I 
I'm not convinced there is an effect. Maybe it's a very small one, but it would be less than an IQ point, I would estimate. But of course, that's my guess. Uh, as long as the alternative is good infant formula. Thank you.